a very particular situation, also security situation of Armenia. Now, um, I know Paul Rasmussen has earlier labeled this uh, your neighbor situation an axis of autocracy. So it's a very difficult geopolitical and geographical situation. How do you deal with the um, question of security in that environment? You know, to be, to be honest, uh, uh, I would like to comment on the internal situation of uh, our neighboring countries. Uh, but from the other side, uh, as I said, democracy is, it isn't something uh, uh, brought by circumstances to Armenia. It was, I believe, it is, it is fully matches with the mentality of the Hawaii people, and it is a strategy for our government, it is our political uh, belief, it is our political identity as well, because uh, if you would uh, know uh, the record of our political team, uh, uh, the, the, the most part of our life, uh, we were fighting for democracy, uh, rule of law, uh, freedom of speech in our country. And now we have an uh, opportunity to implement all those uh, values in our country. But of course, the security uh, situation was uh, complicated and now even more complicated, not only due to our regional situation, but for global situation as well. Because, uh, because obviously, the global order is collapsing now. And uh, the, uh, it was my assessment, uh, and uh, I, I guess I shared uh, that assessment publicly as well, that uh, the war that happened in our region it was kind of prelude of further developments. So now, now, now uh, the the main issue is is uh, security. And what is our strategic view? How are we going to provide security for our country? Recently, I uh, made a speech in our parliament saying that I think that the most important tool for for uh, securing or for for you know, for delivering security, it is it, it, it is the uh, legitimate foreign policy, and that's why we are mentioning so uh, so frequently Hamati Declaration of 1991. I would like to share with audience what it is Hamati Declaration. It was adopted by 12 uh, Soviet republics. Uh, 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 pointing, uh, pointing uh, uh, out two very important uh, uh, ideas. First, Soviet Union stops to exist, and borders, administrative borders between Soviet Union uh, between uh, Soviet republics become state borders because uh, Soviet republics uh, are becoming uh, independent countries. So now, now uh, I think uh, it is very important to know. And in the 6th October uh, in Prague, we had quadrilateral meeting with participation of uh, French president, uh, president of the European Council, Azerbaijani president, and myself. myself and there were two very important uh, agreements uh, reached. First, that Armenia and Azerbaijan recognize each other's territorial integrity and sovereignty on the basis of Almaty Declaration, according to Almaty Declaration, and Almaty Declaration should be a basis for the limitation process of the uh, border between two countries. And, uh, and uh, now that's why uh, I said that uh, that means that we don't need to create new border, new border between Armenia and Azerbaijan. We need just reproduce the existing border uh, on the ground. So that process is going on, and we hope that uh, we will be persist persistent on that. The whole conflict on the border, which we have followed uh, over the last month and years, uh, obviously plays against the background of the broader situation of the relationship with Russia and the role of Russia for Armenia. How would you uh, elaborate this, Chris? Do you know that Armenia uh, is. Uh, a member of CSTO, and now also uh, uh, formally we are a member of CSTO, but uh, 
I announced that we have frozen our participation. Uh, participation. Will you be a member, or do you are you planning to? Do? It is a, a, it is the topic for further conversation, but uh, it is very important to state the current situation and uh, the problem and crisis in our relation our relations emerged from that point when Azerbaijani troops invaded into Armenia and according to the procedures of CSTO. Uh, uh, organization and member sh states should uh, should uh, support and help Armenia for uh, uh, in this situation. But uh, uh, even after uh, official requests, uh, CSTO uh, refused to the, uh, to make some concrete steps. And uh, actually, uh, that was and that is the main reason that we have frozen our participation in all level of CSTO. And now your expectation is that the West steps into the vacuum and provides you with the security? You know, our political uh, position and our policy is to diversify our foreign uh, relations in all uh, in all spheres. Now we, uh, we are creating some cooperation in security field with India, with France, with other uh, countries, uh, and uh, uh, and uh, now we hope to. And now we have some kind of cooperation with the European Union, because as I said, uh, we are happy with the deployment in the European monitoring civilian monitoring mission in our, our border with Azerbaijan. Of course, it is civilian mission, but from the other side. It is a kind of a new factor in 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 uh, security of our region, and it is first time when the European Union somehow is involved in the security agenda of Republic of Armenia. Okay. Now, so now, now we are um, to be a member of the EU. Now we we are looking forward. We are waiting for uh, the uh, decision of the European Union to include Armenia into European peace facility. And uh, and uh, we hope to start uh, to have these are liber uh, liberalization uh, negotiations start. And uh, last year I announced in the European Parliament that Armenia is ready to be as close to European Union um, as the European Union would consider possible. And uh, that is uh, our position. And uh, it's still uh, there. We come to one question from the audience, uh, which also is connected directly to the opportunities that you might have to get closer to Europe, which is, can you elaborate on the initiatives Armenia is taking on to fight corruption? In, you know, as I said, we have, uh, we have uh, huge progress uh, on fighting corruption, but unfortunately we can't say that we have managed to uh, eliminate corruption from Armenia. Um, but what to do? To continue to be persistent, to to and to be persistent in the democratic reform agenda, and that's why uh, the cooperation with the European Union is uh, of utmost importance for us because uh, the European Union now is uh, is our main partner in uh, democratic reform agenda. But we uh, we hope that the European Union and United States as well. They will increase the level of, uh, uh, of uh, supporting us in democratic reform agenda because, uh, as I said, democracy is a strategy for us, and we need. Uh, and we have, uh, by the way, started strategic dialogue with uh, United States in 2019, and uh, and uh, now we see the enhancement of our cooperation with the European Union. And recently I mentioned uh, we had a trilateral meeting with United States, European Union and Armenia. And uh, by the way, it was unprecedented format and uh, we, 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 uh, we adopted a huge agenda for uh, institutional reforms, for economic reforms, for, and it is very important that we hope to, uh, to have more and more uh, support and tangible support from the European Union and United States for addressing humanitarian needs uh, of the refugees from Nagorno-Karabakh, which is also very important. 
because uh, because um, it is a very sensitive and emo- emotional issue for Armenians, obviously, and humanitarian issue. Our last question of this panel will be the, la- is the last question of our former panel also. Uh, if you could name a year when Armenia would be, in your uh, ideas, a uh, member of the EU, what year would that be? What? what? What year, if you could make a wish, Armenia could be a member of, uh, of the EU? What, what year? Yes. This. <laughs> <laughs>